I've been a massive fan of the film look for a very long period of time. My favorite movies this year have all been shot on film. Oppenheimer, Past Lives, Dream Scenario, Poor Things, Killers of the Flower Moon, which if you haven't seen that one, that should still be out in theaters now. It's incredible. Leonardo DiCaprio's in it, so naturally that's what kind of drew me into it. <laughs> the problem is that I've never really been able to emulate that film look as well as I would have liked. I've never been afforded the opportunity to work with film and the digital cameras I have are okay, but they're relatively inexpensive. And I'm not a traditional director. I'm not a colorist. I'm just a guy that makes silly videos on the internet. So I ended up getting an email from a company called D-Hunter and I'd never heard of these guys before in my life. And they said, listen, we've got something that can help create that film look and we're going to give you a copy for free. All we want you to do is just tell us what you think of it. And if I think it's rubbish, I can say that I think it's rubbish. And if I think it's amazing and the best plugin in the entire world then I can say that as well which is well to be honest it, it, it should be expected you know you can't <laughs> reach out to people and say hey yeah can you can you pretend this thing's great please but no they've given me total freedom to talk about whatever I want in any way that I want so today we're going to be taking a look at the Premiere Pro version of the Dehancer plugin like I say this works with After Effects, DaVinci Resolve, Final Cut they've also got versions of Dehancer specifically made for photography for Photoshop, Lightroom, Capture One and they even have a dedicated mobile app and we'll kind of skim over the photography stuff later on in the video. I feel like that deserves its own thing. But for now, let's jump into Premiere Pro and I can kind of show you what it's all about, how it works, the basics from my perspective, not as somebody who is a professional in this industry, but somebody who just really, really appreciates this aesthetic and wants to try to recreate it. Okay, let's jump into it. Are you coming? First impressions are a little bit weird because it adds this weird sort of color grading that often doesn't really go very well with your footage. So you can either disable that by going into the film section. We'll get into all this in a minute, but for now, I think just disable it and then head into input. At this stage, you can go ahead and choose the camera that you've used to shoot all of your footage. They got everything from iPhones, DJI drones, the Canon R series, Red Komodo, Sony A7S, A7R. Pretty much all the high-end cameras you would come to expect are gonna be found here. My camera, however, is not high-end, so we're going to go ahead and select the Rec 709. Now, bear in mind, I'm not going to be reviewing the entire thing. I'm just going to be giving you sort of rough outline as to what everything does, and then the rest is up to you. So once you've selected your camera in input, you're going to go down to film and then select the film stock that you want to use. For this particular one, I'm going to be using the Kodak Vision 3 500T, but there's loads of really cool ones. And if you're familiar with using LUTs, it's similar to that, but it's just a lot more kind of intricate. You can tweak and adjust things to a much higher degree than you would if you were just applying a LUT. Now that we've got the film selected, let's go over to film developer and this will act as your brightness and contrast in a way. Make sure you enable it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the contrast all the way up to around about 70. Boost the color quite a bit, all the way up to around about 70 again. Now you can already see that's that's quite a big difference just applying the film stock and tweaking the brightness and the contrast. But then what we can do is we can go down to film compression and this will kind of act as your highlights and your shadows. Enabling this kind of limits all of the whites and the highlights, but you can just bring those back if you want to. You can change the overall amount of impact that this effect has. I want to find kind of weird, and this is one of my complaints about Dehancer, is that some of these options are automatically automatically enabled, like the original film stock when we imported the effect. The expand tab is automatically enabled, whereas the print one isn't. You have to tweak a lot of things before you can actually get started, so that's one thing I would like to see changed. Tune the white point, and that will do for now, and then we're going to go down to print, and this one is really cool because what you can do is you can select that overall sort of, I don't know how you would describe this, it's kind of like a finish in a way, so linear is the one you naturally start out with, but then if you go down to like glossy, it gives it a kind of glossy texture. The color head tool gives you an option to kind of highlight the entire image and add a certain sort of hue to everything. So we can make it go a little bit colder, we can make it go warmer, that looks pretty good to me. And then you can actually go ahead and adjust the shadows, such as the hair in this case, the mid-tones, so that'll be this kind of skin texture around here. And the highlights of course are going to be like the side of the car where it's really blown out and quite overexposed. Okay, so there we go, that's the overall kind of color grading that we would do per se. And as you can see, that's, that's, that's a big difference going from start to finish. Finish. Now we get into the fun stuff that I think makes D Hunter as good as it actually is, and it's all of the retro film kind of effects. So we have some very simple stuff, such as film grain, which again is weirdly automatically applied. <laughs> if I make this full screen, you can kind of see a bit of a texture going on, and we can tweak that. The 
default 35 ISO 250. If we turn it up to 500, this will emulate the, the whole ISO effect and you can see the grain has actually increased. I don't know how well this is going to translate with YouTube's compression and things like that, but believe me, there's quite a bit of a difference. To explain this as simply as possible, if you go down to 8mm at 250, you get quite a lot of grain and it looks a little bit muddy in a weird way. So for my preference, I'm actually going to go to 35mm at 500 and then we're going to move on to the halation. I'll be honest, when I first installed Dehancer, I didn't understand <laughs> many of these terms. This is not something I'm familiar with, but as soon as I applied the Dehancer effect, I immediately recognized it, especially when you use something like the No Rem Jet. Essentially what it does, it gives you this really nice red sort of blur. It's like chromatic aberration in a way. And fun fact, this actually started off as a defect with a lot of cameras. When you had like harsh lines and edges, it would struggle to be able to comprehend the difference. I think that's a reasonable explanation of it. Look into it more yourself. But I've been trying to figure out how to emulate this effect for such a long period of time, and now I finally got it. And what's really cool about all these, by the way, is you can actually select custom and you can go in and tweak every single element individually. How thick do you want the red lines? How smooth do you want it? Do you want a lot of diffusion or do you not want a lot of diffusion? For the purposes of this video, I'm just going to be going with the 16mm no rem jet. The really lovely aesthetic so far, I think. Then we have Bloom, which is kind of hard to tell exactly what it does here, but I had another clip ready and waiting to go. And if I enable Bloom on this one, you can see that it brings all your edges and your highlights and really softens them up and gives them a nice warm tone all around here. Kind of like a dreamy aesthetic. Again, if we just toggle that on and off, you can see to all the highlights, all the really white areas, it gives it a really lovely effect. And this is my daughter, by the way, when she was about a year old. The first time she ever met her uncle. So for this one, I'm going to be leaving Bloom off. Then you have film damage, and this is essentially just the scratches and the dust that you would normally need an overlay for, but with Dehunter, you can have everything all done within the app. I'll have a little video playing in the background to better demonstrate what it looks like. Then you have a really awesome vignette option, and this is, it's a mixed bag. Like, I love how this looks. If we turn it on it does a really really wonderful job but one thing i don't like is that there's no actual like visual overlay no oval or circle showing you what area you're selecting all you can do is turn the exposure all the way down like this and then you can kind of move it around like a spotlight as it were and it's kind of difficult to control and then you can kind of move it to the right position something like that and then you would go in and tweak the exposure and the feather and everything else but i would much rather like something like this it's a spotlight effect that comes naturally with premiere yeah, doesn't work as well in terms of vignette and everything else, but you can actually just move the source around like so. And so then when you compare it to something like this, where you have to manually move it around, it just, it feels a little bit weird. So that is one more thing I would like changed in the future. Next up, you have a film breath effect. And again, I'll put an overlay on screen as to what that does, but essentially it just adds a kind of nice little flicker and some of the exposure at the same time. It, it's kind of hard to describe without knowing all the right terminology, but it's a cool little effect. And then the final effect we're going to be talking about is gate weave and essentially what that does is it crops into the image ever so slightly as you can see like this and as you play the clip it gives you a little bit of motion almost as if the camera were being handheld or there was no stabilization again all of this is just really nice and handy to have in one individual plugin you've got some monitoring options an overall output control which is really cool so you can see the before shot and the after and again what's so cool with this is you can actually keyframe it so we can go from here go to around about the middle and we can turn the total impact all the way up and you have this really nice transition of a before and after and then finally you can actually export all of your saves and your changes as a lot which i think is awesome but it means that say we wanted to add another clip over here okay so this one is completely unedited if we go ahead and add a lumetri color basic correction browse select the lot we just made and just like that, we have all of the color settings ready to go. You will lose the film damage and the halation and things like that. You can add that all back in with Dehancer. But if you just want a very simple color grade that is created with Dehancer to get that film aesthetic and just put it on every single clip in the future, you can do that. And I think this is one of the coolest features that I'm absolutely in love with. Okay, so that gives you a very basic understanding of what Dehancer is, what it can do. And is it perfect? No, I don't think so. It's, it's very intensive on your PC. I couldn't really do much playback while recording a video because it's very GPU intensive and I use a GPU encoder when recording so it just it presents a lot of issues like that I mean what you should really do is go ahead and get all your clips edited do all the cuts that you need to do and then just drag an adjustment layer on top 
apply dehancer, make weird tweaks, and then export. Like editing with this overlay is not going to be particularly fun because of how intensive it is. It is worth noting that when you first install dehancer, it gives you the option of selecting what kind of GPU you have and things like that to make sure that you do get the best possible performance from the plugin. Then you get to what I think is one of the biggest drawbacks of dehancer, and it's the price. It is a very expensive plugin. When you're paying for this thing, you can go to the checkout and use code HERO and you'll be able to get 10% off. It is an affiliate link, so not only does it help save you money, but it helps support me and everything that I do here. But oof, that's a big boy. I think even the subscription models, 150 quid for three months, that is very pricey. And on one end of the spectrum, I do kind of get it because this is a specialist tool. Like, I don't think I have ever seen anything that emulates film as well as this does. And there is a huge market of people who would honestly pay this and not even think twice about it. But then you have the other end of the spectrum and then you realize that you could actually buy DaVinci Resolve Studio 18 for nearly half the price of Dehancer. And that's where it starts getting weird because if you're an entry level creator like myself, I would much rather pay for a very powerful software like DaVinci than a plugin, which will have limitations. With that said, however, there is a light option which comes with less features, but it's a lot less expensive. There's also individual effects such as the grain and the bloom, breath halation, and even a free version of the monitoring tool, which you can all buy individually, and maybe you can just gather a bunch of different effects over time if you're on a much tighter budget. I think honestly it depends on how much you're going to utilize all these tools, how often you're going to be using them, is it worth the investment for you? But is it worth the asking price? Um, yeah. Yeah, I would say so. This is an aesthetic that I love and a science that I want to learn more about. The plugin itself is phenomenal and comes with a bunch of features that I haven't ever seen elsewhere. And I genuinely think I'm going to be using elements of this plugin in pretty much every single video that I create going forward, even if it's just for like a 10 second clip or, or creating some kind of flashback sequence. Like now that I have this tool, I can see so many uses for it. And I think if you share that same sort of passion for film aesthetics and old school video, then sure, this is going to be great for you. Before we wrap up, I did promise that I would quickly run through the mobile app, which handles both photo and video, and the photography exclusive versions of the Dehancer plugin. The mobile app has a very similar functionality to that of the desktop plugins. It performs pretty well, which is rare for a mobile video editing app. There's a little bit of stuttering here and there, but it's not unusable. And you get a very similar result, especially with video, as you would get with something like the Premiere Pro plugin that we've looked at today. And naturally, you get all the effects like halation, bloom, film damage, all that good stuff. The one major drawback, again, though, is the price especially from mobile app. The mobile app is an absolutely staggering £400, again, for a lifetime membership, but that's very expensive. And I personally can't justify anything close to that. There are some cheaper subscription-based models, £6 a week, £10 a month, or £90 for a year, but honestly, I think they're all too expensive for mobile apps. Regardless of how well they function, that's pretty much the same amount of money I would pay for Premiere Pro or Photoshop. And again, maybe you have a different use for all of this stuff than I do. I just like including it as kind of a little bit of an aesthetic, but this could be your entire career. Maybe that's worth it for you. But for me, uh, when too expensive in my opinion. If anything, I would expect the, the same licenses. If you buy something for DaVinci or for Premiere Pro or for Photoshop, I would kind of expect that same license to work for a mobile app. Like you just download the app on your phone for free, a little trial mode or whatever, put in your license that you have for your main software that you've already paid £400 for, and then you get everything on your phone as well. Hello, just a quick note. I just received an email from Dehancer. I asked them whether they would consider this joint pricing thing, um, and they said it's something they considering so I'm not saying hold off on buying both the desktop and the mobile version but it could be something they do so bear it in mind also yes I'm, I'm wearing a Dragon Ball Z shirt don't 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 even think about judging me okay this is what peak creativity looks like <laughs> and the Lightroom and Photoshop plugins are you guessed it absolutely awesome to work with I think these are worth money and I think these are actually cheaper than the video ones yeah so these are only $200 for all the plugins and everything else inside of Premiere Pro, Photoshop, Capture One, Affinity. I feel like I could justify this one as somebody who loves, again, emulating that film look for photography. I'm actually going to be creating an entirely separate review for all of d 
as photography stuff, so be sure to subscribe if you want to see that. Should be out within the next couple of weeks. I do have a couple of other videos that I need to make, but I'm going to be taking a trip all the way up to London, taking some photography and stuff there, and then we'll see how well this performs. And I think that's pretty much it for now. Once again, massive thank you to Decanter for sending me out a version of their plugin for me to play with and have fun. And it's been a really cool learning experience more than anything else. Like, yes, it's a great tool, but uh, just being able to research this, this wonderful medium that I have no idea about, <laughs> it's been very insightful. And um, I wouldn't have had that opportunity if it weren't for you. So thank you. There's a link in the description and a QR code somewhere on screen now. You can actually go ahead and download a free trial of Dehaunt to see if it works with your workflow. Just make sure that when you do decide to upgrade and you're going to spend all that money on a lifetime license or even a subscription, use the code HERO to save yourself 10%. I feel like you're going to need all the savings you can get with this one. <laughs> all right. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.